Hi there. This is a video uh, about laws of exponents, and we're going to be talking about rational exponents today. Now, what I want to do is talk about, first of all, rational means that it's a fraction, okay? Uh, the root word in rational is ratio, uh, and so this means that we're going to have fractional exponents. Now, what I want to do is, is look at a couple of things. Now, we know what happens... Um, I'm going to use uh, 4 as an example. I'm going to start taking, uh, you know, 4 to the 4 cubed means we're doing 4 times 4 times 4, right? And that's going to give us 64. Uh, 4 squared means we're doing 4 times 4, and that's going to give us 16. 4 to the first power uh, is going to give us 4. Um, and I'm going to leave some space. Um, and then I'm going to do 4 to the 0 power, and we know from our rules that that's going to be equal to 1. Um, and then if we have, say, 4 to the negative 1 power, that's going to give us 1 over 4. Um, and then if we do 4 to the negative 2, that means we're doing 1 over 4 squared, which means that we're doing 1 over 4 times 4, which gives us 1 over 16. Okay, so what happens is, um, as we look at these if our exponent is large, okay, then what happens is, is that, you know, the result of multiplying that number is going to get bigger. So if our exponent is greater than 1, all right, it's going to get bigger. If our exponent is 1, it doesn't change. If our exponent is 0, all right, then it's going to be 1. And as our exponents get negative, the numbers just get really small. So what happens if we raise... 4 to the 1 half power. What if we raise that to a fraction, okay? Now, one of the things that we can do is we can think of square roots, okay? And um, if, if I talk about square roots, that's the opposite of squaring a number, okay? Um, And so if you think of like, say, you know, 4 squared gives us 16, then if we take the square root of 16, that brings us back to 4. And what we can say here is that the square root of a number is the same thing as raising it to the 1 half power, okay? And so 4 to the 1 half is actually going to give us 2, all right? Now, what I want to show you is, is, is having all these numbers listed out. You know, if you start with 4 cubed and you get 64, and 4 squared gives you 16, all right, as if your exponent is larger than 1, your number is going to get bigger. If your exponent is 1, it's going to stay the same. But what if your exponent is between 0 and 1? Well, it's going to get smaller, okay? And, and I wanted you to see that, all right, because you can really plug in any number, um, you know, for it, as an exponent. Any number can be an exponent, and we just want to know, well, what happens to that number, okay? So let's talk about a rule here, okay? And the rule is that, um, you know, let's say you have some number <clears throat> a that's being raised to the m over nth power, okay? You're raising it to a fraction. And what we have is we then take the nth root of a to the m power, or we can write this as the nth root of a, that quantity raised to the nth power. This one is, is probably the, the one that I use the most, all right, and, and that's the idea. Now, let's go back to our problem here, and let's raise 4 to the 1 half power. What we can do, the rule is, is that you can now rewrite this as a radical, okay? And you can take the square root of 4 to the first power. Now, you know that 4 to the first power is just 4, and then the square root of 4. Now, typically, we don't put the 2 here. Um, if it's a square root, we would just write this as the square root of 4. And what we ask ourselves is two numbers multiplied by themselves that give you 4, and that's going to bring you back down to 2. Okay, let's look at another example. Let's look at 
say, 8 to the 1 third power. Okay. Now, if we're doing 8 to the 1 third power, we can come over here and we can say, all right, we're going to take the cube root of 8. Now, when we do this, what we want to know, you, you have to also you have to know your, your perfect squares and you have to know your perfect cubes and things like that. And what this is, is we have to go, what number multiplied by itself three times gives us 8? Well, one of the things that we know is that if you take 2 times 2 times 2, that's going to give you 8. All right, 2 cubed gives you 8. Therefore, going backwards, the cube root of 8 is going to bring you back to 2, okay? And that's the idea. That's what we're doing here, all right? So it's a little bit, um, you know, funky when it comes to uh, seeing something raised to a, a fraction and you, and you kind of freak out and you don't know what to do, and that's totally normal. But then we just got to do this, all right? And we just got to put it in a cube root form. Um, let's look at another one, okay? Uh, and let's say that we've got um, 8 to the 2 thirds power, okay? And using our rule, what we would want to do is we would want to say, all right, we're going to take the cube root of 8 squared. Or we could take the cube root of 8, that whole quantity squared. Now, I'm going to look at I'm going to look at this one first, and what we would then do is we would take the cube root of eight squared, which gives us sixty four. And so, if we take the cube root of sixty four, what number multiplied by itself three times gives us sixty four? Well, if we go back and think, you know, four cubed is four times four times four. Four times four is sixteen. Sixteen times four again gives us sixty four. So the cube root of 64 gives us 4. Now, the other thing that we could do is we could evaluate the cube root first and then square it. This is what I typically do. Um, and so from here, we would want to take the cube root of 8, which we just did, and that's going to give us 2. But then we still need to square that, and that's going to uh, be 2 squared, which is going to give us 4. So you, you end up getting the same thing regardless um, as to which way you do it. Now, the, the last thing that I want to talk about is let's say that you've got, you know, something like this, where you've got, say, the fourth root of x to the seventh power, okay? And you wanted to rewrite that using a rational exponent. Well, what you would do is you would go backwards from your rule, and you would say that this is going to be x to the seven-fourths power, okay? going back and forth from one or the other. So that's important that, you know, if you're giving something in radical form, you can write it as an, uh, a rational exponent. Or given something as a rational exponent, you could write it as a radical. So hopefully that helps. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, I know this is pretty confusing stuff, um, but please reach out if you have any questions, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye.